heck happened here? Dave from Crafted Channel. We have a popcorn scooper. I have a Roosevelt popper in my basement, which we haven't used in years, and I recently cleaned it up so that we could make some popcorn for basketball season, and this handle is broke. So we're going to make a new one on the 3D printer, and I'm going to show you how I draw it up. Here is a product called Tinkercad. I'm going to measure this handle. I've not done any of this work in advance. And this handle is 73.6 millimeters long. I'm going to grab a cylinder over here and drag it out on the workspace. I'm going to put this ruler on the workspace, which means every object I click on will now have measurements. So 73.6. I'm going to click on the red numbers there. 73.6, and it's this vertical arrow tells me that I'm adjusting the height. Now we want to know the diameter of this. And it looks like the diameter is about 28 and a half. 28.5. I'm working in millimeters here. Now, I, so that you can produce ovals out of this cylinder. And when I hit enter here, I'm only going to get a change in the width, and you'll see that it will ovalize. Look at the top. So I need to change the depth of it to 28.5 also. So now we have a cylinder that's the same diameter as this part and the same height. So what are we going to do next? We need to make the round top on here. I'm going to do that with a ball. And we're going to make this ball 28.5 in all dimensions. Okay, so now we have a simulator for this. Now the ball is down low, so we need to raise it up. So we're going to raise it up um, 76.6. We're going to get the top of it at 76.6. So, so we got it's 28.5 high, so that would be 48, 48.4. So 48.4 plus 76.6. I'm sorry, half of this diameter plus 48.4 should equal 76.6. So let's, oops. Uh, oh, that's right, yeah, okay, so we have the ball. I got a little bit sticking up through there. So I made a mistake. Let me click that and grab it. So this number and this number, 28.5 and 48.4, need to add up to 76.6. So it's obviously it's 48.1. Okay. Now, this hides the ball inside the part here. I, now what I want to do is I want to bring the top of this cylinder down halfway up the ball. So that's 28.5 millimeters high, so I want to drop the cylinder 14 and a quarter. So that's going to be 14 and a quarter, so that would be 62.35 yeah, 0.35. So there we go. Now I'm going to change the snap grid down here to 0.1 millimeter so I can make very fine adjustments. <clears throat> and let me go over what that is. So if I select the ball, now I hit my right cursor, it's going to move one tenth of a millimeter each time I do that. If I set the snap to, or the grid to 5 millimeters, now every time I move the cursor, it moves 5 millimeters. So, let me set this back to a tenth. I normally work with it at a tenth. Now, an important feature here, this adjust a line 
this will center these objects first in this direction when I hit this spot and next in this direction when I hit this spot. So now it's perfectly centered on there. Now how are we going to get these these uh, grips here? Well there's another thing over here. A, tor a torus. Now this I'm going to, I'm not going to measure this, I'm going to take a swag at it. I'm going to go with uh, Let's go with 32 millimeters. 32. And let's go with uh, not all of, it's not a complete half circle here. What's here is about five and a half millimeters. So let's make this, um, let's make this six and a half. Okay. The other thing we're going to do is make it a hole. Let's center our torus by going back to this alignment tool. Now the torus is not big enough for, oh, this needs to be 32. I don't have those matching. Let's make it 34. Just trying, oops. I have made a mistake. Let me get the torus out of there. 28.5, 28.5. Somehow or another, I changed the diameter of my objects. There we go. Now I'm going to center the torus. And I'm going to raise it up some. Let's just raise it up uh, 30 millimeters. Oops. I'm going to select just the torus. Let's raise it up 30 millimeters. Now I'm going to group this object so we can see what our groove looks like. This applies all the holes in the solids. So if we printed it right now, we'd get an object that looked like that. And I see some deformity in this groove. Let me, let me go look at that torus and see if I have it uh, shaped properly. Uh, 34. I don't have it the same size everywhere. I'm going to realign everything. Selected all the objects, and I'm going to group it. Okay, I don't think my groove is deep enough. So I'm going to make the torus a little smaller. Now, when you change the dimensions of something in Tinkercad, it doesn't stay on center. It moves off to one side. be nice if uh, it stayed on center. Perhaps there's an adjustment for, for that. I don't know what it is. Or a setting, I mean. Okay, so now let's group this and see what our groove looks like. I think that's a reasonable facsimile. Okay. bottom of our first groove is going to be roughly 20 millimeters. So let's set this at 20. I'm going to copy it now. So I've made another one. It looks like the bottom of the next groove 
just kind of eyeballing this. We're going to say this is 11. Oops, I'm sorry. We're going to add 11. We're going to say 31. And I don't think that's high enough. The flat spot doesn't look big enough. 32. Okay, so this one we're going to add another 12 to 44. And this one we're going to add another 12 to the height. And that's from the work surface to the bottom of the torus. We're going to add 12 to 44 is going to be 56. Okay, now I'm going to grab all these objects and align them again. Now notice that comes right under that ball. Let me move that over. I want to see... Yeah, that's kind of right at the bottom of the ball. Realign it since I've moved it. And now let's group it. There we go. We have a handle. Now, how are we going to make this shape on the bottom? Notice this looks like a ball. This profile here. And then there's a cone. So let's uh, let's bring this ball over here. I'm going to ungroup all that stuff. Let's see, we're 28 and a half. Okay, so now we have a ball of the proper dimensions, and I feel like we may need to raise it up some. I'm just gonna I'm gonna set this at 14 and a quarter. which is the radius of the ball. And look, that looks just about right. So I think the ball is in fact sitting on the sitting on the ground here. Let's align it. It should almost disappear. We see a little faint line of it. Now we've got to make a cone shape here on the bottom. Now this is a little trickier. I've grabbed this cone here. And I'm going to grab a cylinder. Now we know our ball that's hiding in here is 28.5 millimeters in diameter. You think about this. So we're going to make this cone that size 28.5, 28.5. And I'm going to end up turning this over, and this is going to be the bottom of our handle, this area here. I can print out to about 35 degrees rather nicely. Um, I'm not sure what that angle is. There may be a way to measure it. I don't know what it is. But I'm going to stand this up. It's probably a little steeper than the actual handle, but that's okay. I sure don't, I just don't want to do a 45 because that will require supports. Now I'm going to turn this over. Okay, so the top of it is at 30.2. Well, I want the top of it halfway up the ball, which is 14 and a quarter millimeters. 30.2 minus half the diameter of the ball, which is 14.25, because remember it's 28.5 equals 1595. I'm going to set this to minus 1595. So 
that right? No, I want to take um, I know the center of that ball is 1425 I'm going to move this cylinder up that much 6235 minus 14.25 4809. I'm going to put my 14.25 down here. That raised that right back up. Ah, and see we have the ball here with the cylinder intersecting it right in the middle. Now what I'm going to do, I should have done this to begin with, let's center the cone up. But the cone is too high. I want to drop it down. And actually I'm going to have to drop it down more because I want the edge of the cone to become tangent with the side of the circle. So let's say minus 20. Oh, I did a control Z there to uh, undo that. Since I moved the whole thing, I want to move just the cone. And let's zoom in. All right, I've realized I'm going to have to make this cone smaller, and I need to drop it down a little bit so I can see more radius. So let's go uh, minus uh, 25. That's pretty good. Now I want to shrink the diameter until it uh, until that this angle becomes tangent with the corner where it just looks like a continuation right around the corner. So I don't know what the diameter of the ball is right there where the cone's intersecting, but uh, it's quite a bit smaller, so let's go with 20. And let's center all this stuff again. Okay, I went too small. So let's go with uh, 24. Center all this stuff. Ooh, now we're getting close. I think I can raise it up a little bit from here. Okay. That's looking pretty good. Shrink it down a little bit more. Let's go with 22. Recenter that. This little box here will zoom us right in on where we're working. I think that needs to be bigger and higher. So let's go to 23. 23. That didn't change. Oops. A little sensitive. It's looking pretty good. I'm going to raise it up some. So minus 20. Minus 21. Went a little too high. I think I need to go a little bigger. 
in diameter and a little higher. 24. Now that's starting to look good. Minus 20. Oops. Move the whole object. Minus 20. Minus 19. Just experimenting here. I'm not exactly tangent. This goes up and then we have a turn. And if it was tangent, it would just climb right on around here. Must decide. Well, I think I'm going to raise this up to this next segment line and then increase the diameter. Realign all this. I'm almost back up to my original diameter. Why can't I select that? There we go. Still not big enough though. Look at that. That's almost a perfectly straight line. I think I'm happy with that. Okay, so we have this part going below the surface. We're going to cut it off. So I'm going to grab another cylinder here and I'm going to make this cylinder a hole. And I'm gonna, it's 20 tall, so I'm gonna put it minus 20. Put it under the cone, it completely contains the cone. So I'm gonna replace that with a hole. Now I notice something's happened here. That's 32, this should be 20. Somehow or another, that got to be 23. And I see a ridge, I see a ridge around here. So perhaps this part's a little too tall. This part here. I'm shortening the cylinder. Uh, let's go to 47. Ah, got rid of a lot of that. 46.6. 46.2. Okay, so... Let's figure out where the top of this should be. It should be at 48.1 which is how high the bottom of the ball is plus half the diameter of the ball which is 14.25 so 48.1 plus 14.25 62.35 okay so 
62.35. This is up off the ground some, so we have to figure this out. So 62.35. We're up off the ground. 17.5 minus, or 17.25. 17.25 equals 45.1. 45. There we go. Now we've gotten rid of that ridge. And we're looking good, looking good. So let's group all these items. And we'll apply all those changes. And what do you think? Don't those two things look very similar? So I pull this out to the camera. Mm. Okay, so this is what you can do with a 3D printer. Now, there's a hole in here. We're going to measure the diameter of this shaft. And this shaft is 7.88 millimeters. Okay, now the, it's going to make a hole that's smaller than 7.88 if I, if I uh, print one 7.88. And there'll be an error of almost a millimeter. So I'm going to make this uh, 8.5. And then we might drill it, we might have to drill it out. And how deep is the hole? I can use the tip here of my digital caliper and just push it down into the hole. Oh, wow, the hole is really deep. <laughs> 70.92. So let's look at how far this needs to go on. It goes on this far about to that point where my thumb is. Okay, so about 32 millimeters. And we're going to make this a hole. And look, we can work underneath of the part. I'm going to put that hole here. And then I'm going to center it. Adjust. Line. Center. Center. Now, if I group that, we can see the hole up in the part. And get rid of some of this junk here. Instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to print the knob as a solid object. So it's solid just like this. I just I like the feel of solid printed things. Um, I hope this isn't 45 here. I'm going to just tell it not to print an overhang. If I have any problems printing this it'll be right at the bottom edge of these shapes here. Let's hope we don't have an issue with that. Um, I think we have a printable object. Uh, da -da -da. Let's move it over here in the middle of the table. Not that it matters. I think it's done. Now, I said it's going to print a hole that's too small. Now, the reason why that is is when it's extruding the plastic it's kind of like dragging a worm around in the circle or dragging a rope around in the circle the, the rope or the worm if you're dragging it is going to be to the inside of the actual arc that you're carving out with the nozzle and it's my experience on a hole this size there's going to be almost a one millimeter error so if I have to drill it out that's fine now I have another problem, and that is, this has got a pinch in it, which is an anti-rotation feature. 
and I'm not going to put that in the printed object. My plan is to warm this up and push the handle on and let that melt in. Now that might be a bad idea and if it fouls it up I'll print another one and we'll put the slots in or maybe we'll glue it in with epoxy. Let's print this item. Design download for 3D printing. STL there we go. Let me go back and look at my slicer. Hmm. I'll turn on the slicer with supports so we don't have a roof collapse in that hole. One hour and 31 minutes. All we got to do is print it now. Here's a problem that I have. This is Kiki. Kiki claw crawls in every hole there is. What the heck happened here?